The sudden death of the county executive has been a shock to everyone in the local government community, and it's taken us a little bit of time to uh, gather some information to provide to you all this morning. Um, I'm Elise Armacost. I'm the Public Affairs Director for the Baltimore County Fire Department. And I want to uh, explain to you, first of all, that the purpose of this briefing is to provide some detail about Mr. Kamenitz's medical emergency and the fire and EMS response to it. I've asked two people to be here to assist with this briefing. To my right is Dr. Gail Cunningham. She is the Chief Medical Officer at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. And to my left is Fire Director Richard Schenning. Uh, Rich oversees our EMS division. If you have specific questions about EMS, he is our expert. What I'm going to do uh, is to provide a linear account of this morning's events until the point at which we delivered Mr. Kamenetz to the hospital. Director Schenning, as I said, is our expert on EMS matters, so uh, if, you, if we get into any kind of uh, nitty-gritty about that, I'm going to defer to him. Excuse me just a minute. My throat is really dry this morning. Okay. So let me begin <clears throat> at, at the beginning. Shortly after 2 a.m. this morning, the Baltimore County 911 Center received a 911 call from the county executive complaining of tightness in the chest. He said on the call that he was making the call from the Chestnut Ridge Volunteer Fire Company. The 911 call awakened two members of the Chestnut Ridge Volunteer Fire Company who were sleeping at the station. They went down to the parking lot where they met the county executive and his wife. At this point, the county executive was conscious and he was speaking. The Chestnut Ridge members took him into the station to begin an evaluation and basic life support care when the county executive's condition quickly deteriorated. He lost consciousness, he lost a pulse, and his heart stopped beating. Chestnut Ridge provided CPR manually and with a Lucas CPR device, which is an automated CPR device. They also used an automated external defibrillator to try to restore his heart rhythm. At one point, volunteer personnel did manage to restore his pulse, and they administered an IV to prepare him for advanced life support measures to be provided by career EMS personnel who were en route from the garrison fire station. However, his condition again deteriorated and CPR uh, and, and uh, excuse me, Chestnut Ridge personnel continued to treat the county executive with CPR and defibrillation. Uh, they, the, the personnel from Chestnut Ridge defibrillated Mr. Kamenetz a total of three times prior to the arrival of the ALS team from Medic 19 out of the Garrison Fire Station. When Medic 19 arrived, they immediately began advanced life support measures, including administration of cardiac medications and airway management. Uh, Mr. Kamenetz was transferred uh, into Medic 19 and prepared for transport. ALS care continued throughout the transport to St. Joseph. The medic uh, was in emergency mode with lights and sirens the entire way to the hospital. Four EMS professionals rode in the medic with the county executive, an EMT who was the driver, a paramedic, uh, an EMS supervisor, and uh, our fire department medical director who is a licensed, a licensed physician. At St. Joe's, he was immediately transferred to the care of the hospital staff. And at that point, I'm going to turn uh, the podium over to Dr. Cunningham uh, to talk about the, the hospital's role in his care. Thank you. Um, so per protocol um, en route to the hospital, we were notified not of who was coming, but that a full cardiac arrest was coming to St. Joe's, so our team is fully prepared. Um, our nurses and emergency medicine phys physician were prepared at the bedside when Mr. Kamenetz arrived. He was in full cardiac arrest. 
uh, receiving CPR. Um, and he had a, um, a heart rhythm called ventricular fibrillation, which is very difficult to treat. Our team continued with the full advanced um, cardiac life support, uh, attempting to de further defibrillate him and uh, manage him medically, and very unfortunately were unable to ever restore a heartbeat and pr pronounced him uh, dead right around 3.20 uh, this morning.